metal to the space and we did a lot of research and we did lots of stuff and in our today's video how do we get it back to earth for the next mission so our today's topic is how do we land a space shuttle from space so if you saw the length of this video you know it's probably long so get a charge phone and some snacks and you are ready to go so let's stick to the point and dive right in how to land a space shuttle from space okay a quick fact the thing is you going to need a time machine because the last shuttle landed over 5 years ago they live in museums now and they are completely unflyable even though it is retired it's very important to know about them as they are one of the reasons why our international space station runs so let's get started so our goal is to land on a runway at the kennedy space center in florida but let's say right now we are orbiting around south america traveling at 17000 miles per hour uh, in the wrong direction well we can't just turn around uh, well changing direction in orbit takes crazy amount of energy so what do we do well basically nothing so it turns out that the earth spins which means that kennedy space center is just gonna come to us if we wait for it so it turns out that we are still traveling at over 17000 miles per hour to give you a perspective of how fast that is the runway that we are gonna land on is 15000 feet long or about 40 to 45 football fields it's one of the longest runway in the world but at our current speed we are going to travel that entire length in just 6 tenths of a second wow so we need to slow down a lot but we are kind of out of fuel all we've got left are these oms rocket motors which combined produce less than 1% of the thrust of the main engines they are not going to slow us down 17000 miles an hour but there is a trick we don't actually have to slow by that much if we just slow down by 225 miles an hour that would be enough to let us start falling into the atmosphere back into the earth where air resistance will do the rest of the work so now we perform the deorbit burn which lasts for about 3 minutes with our oms rocket motors after that we are going to coast for about half an hour before we reach the atmosphere but we can't go in the atmosphere backwards first of all we would look ridiculous but the thing that matters the most is air resistance is such a great friend that it would essentially melt us so we pitch up to 40 degrees attack angle that's the angle between where your velocity is taking you versus where your nose is pointed at this angle your easily meltable aluminum frame is protected by over 2000 silica tiles so if all went well we should hit the first traces of the atmosphere at 400000 feet or about 5000 miles from our landing site this is all good but after a few minutes there starts to be a little bit of a problem we've got wings and wings generate lift and as we get into denser air they generate so much lift that we are actually going to start to go back up and skip off the atmosphere and for that maybe we can just change the way that our nose points yes it does not have 
to point up if we roll it to the right or the left we can point our lift sideways instead of up well this will effectively let us control how fast we are descending with a steeper bank angle we are going to generate less upward lift so we are going to descend faster wow and conversely with a shallow bank angle we are going to generate more upward lift so we are not going to fall as fast remember that the whole reason we are slowing down in the first place is because we are running into air so if we want to slow down faster what we really need is more air and where is more air lower in the atmosphere the atmosphere gets denser as you go down so in a sense we kind of already did figure out the right tools to control the deceleration because if we bank heavier that means we are going to descend faster as we already know so we are going to reach the car faster and the car is going to help us slow down faster conversely if we bank shallower then we are not going to descend as fast so we are going to stay in the thin air longer which means we are not going to slow down as fast so there is just one last problem we are kind of starting to turn this bank angle thing isn't working out as well as we hoped so here is a fun video clip so here is what happens the nasa astronauts run to their scientists and ask uh this bank angle thing is not working we are kind of starting to turn like we can't just go and land in panama so nasa scientists say whoa 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 calm down see you can just bank the other way so you turn the other way and you get a wavy s turn path which leads to our runway see this is not rocket science now back to the topic this wavy s turn is our reentry path but it works that's all matters so before we go any further let's review what we just learned So we start with the deorbit burn and that lasts for about 3 minutes. After that we coast towards the atmosphere and while we are doing that we pitch up to 40 degrees attack angle so our heat shield can protect us. Once we get into the atmosphere we control everything with the bank angle. If it looks like we are going to overshoot the runway then we bank heavier so we slow down faster and if it looks like we are not going to make it then we bank less so we don't slow down as fast and also every time we get turn too far away from our target we just turn the other way in this series of what's called the roll reversals that's what nasa calls it this is the reentry a picture of the reentry of sts135 the last space shuttle mission the thing interesting about these reentry flames are that these are not technically fire even though it looks like them it's not it's essentially a really hot gas that's so hot that electrons break away from their atoms and molecules and they start to glow at this soft orange color this is a different state of matter called plasma you've seen it all the time in the form of neon signs lightning mostly the sun is a big glowing ball of plasma okay now as we slow down we get less of this plasma and we have less heat so we are less concerned about melting but we get more and more concerned about just falling out of the air Now we really transitioned from a spaceship to an aeroplane. So at 8000 miles an hour we 
start bringing the nose down lowering our angle of attack then at 1700 miles an hour we switch into a completely different guidance mode called terminal area energy management or tame now we are flying like an aeroplane a really bad aeroplane we have no engines but we are sort of functioning like an aeroplane so in this spaceship aeroplane now we pitch to control our descent rate we bank to turn and we also have these brake which can open and close to help us control the air speed so up until this point we've been running on autopilot an autopilot run by five of these redundant computers each with a whole megabyte of memory <laughs> which couldn't even fit a single cell phone photo on one of these but it was pretty good at flying the shuttle but as we get towards the runway the commander takes over manual flying this mode is called CSS or control stick steering the shuttle is fly by wire which actually means that the computer runs everything all the time even in css it's really the computer pretending to let the humans fly so team actually flies us past the runway center line and then around this imaginary spiral called the heading alignment cone if all goes well we should be lined up with the runway on the glide slope by 1000 feet in altitude if we were a typical airliner on glide slope would mean a 3 degree descent path flown at about 160 miles an hour with a descent rate of about 750 feet per minute but that's not going to work for us the shuttle has stubby little wings and a big fat round nose it is affectionately referred to as a flying brick NASA astronauts train in a modified Gulfstream 2 jet which in order to simulate how unaerodynamic the shuttle is flying with landing gear down and its engines in reverse <laughs> so we're going to need a brick friendly glide slope of 20 degrees flown at 345 miles an hour with a descent rate of over 10000 feet per minute to give you some context on how fast a descent rate that is 1000 feet per minute is about a uh, 120 miles an hour that's the terminal velocity of a skydiver in free fall obviously we can't land like that so at 2000 feet we start pitching up to bring the nose up in what's called the pre-flare maneuver the landing gear comes down at 300 feet we wait until this last minute because the gear creates a lot of drag and once lowered in flight it cannot be raised again we reach the runway at just 26 feet air speed bleeding of crazy we touch down at 225 miles an hour the drag chute is deployed the nose gear is gradually lowered down just an hour and 5 minutes since we performed our deorbit burn on the other side of the planet we've just landed the space shuttle from space of course where else would you land it from so now that the video is over did you like it leave it down in the comments below and if you felt that this video was interesting hit the like button to show your motivation subscribe to my channel and share to everyone so they get notified thank you and bye bye i'll see you in my next video until that vijay signing off
Peace.